Yo, 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 it's Hens back with another video. So uh, in this video, we're going to kind of go over exactly what you guys should be investing in for our team of the year. Uh, because I know a lot of people are going to be asking, oh, what should I be buying today at midnight when uh, Champs Rewards come out? Or what should I be buying in the days before team of the year? And as you can see, I have 200k left. Uh, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do with that. Um, now, first things first, before we get started, uh, I am going to be doing a giveaway um, on my next video, or not on my next video, my video on Friday, sorry, when Team of the Year comes out, a $50 Hub Point giveaway for subscribers only, so if you're interested in that, you can, you know, look out for that, but, um, yeah, so, for this video, though, we're going to be going over exactly what you guys should be doing to, you know, prepare for Team of the Year on Friday, so the first thing you got to know is, ask yourself, am I going to make a Team of the Year or no, and the answer to that question is going to be very dependent on what you're going to do with your coins, now, at this point, uh, I would say don't invest in any more, you know, fodder cards, 83s to 89s or whatever, 88s or whatever you're going to have. Uh, don't invest in any of those uh, at all um, before Team of the Year because at this point, they're pretty much at their highest price uh, that they're going to be at. And you know what? You probably missed your chance to invest for a Team of the Year at the lowest price. Now, if you have like 1.7 plus million coins, you have like a, a crap ton of coins and you still want to invest in players, then I would say the only time left, the only window of opportunity left is going to be today at midnight. But the problem is today at midnight, people are going to be holding their packs for Team of the Year on Friday, and not a lot of people are going to be opening their Ultimate Choice packs, which means that there won't be a lot of stuff on the market, which means that prices for fodder cards are still going to be inflated. If we take a look at uh, 87s, which were the best buy before Team of the Year started, uh, I was buying mine at 32 k now they're probably extinct at 40,000 coins and there's nothing you can do about it. They're probably extinct at 45,000 coins even. I haven't really checked. Uh, yeah, they're exactly 45,000 coins and they're those two just got listed. So like 45,000 coins is what you're looking at to invest in uh, 87 overalls. And they were about 15k less than that about two weeks ago. So you kind of missed your window of opportunity to invest because you're going to end up paying you know, hundreds of thousands more coins for each team of the year uh, if you're going to try to invest now. However, with that being said, there is going to be a window of opportunity for investing uh, right now and preparing for the team of the year, okay? So what you're going to be want to be looking at uh, is a few different things. Now, the first thing I want to say is if you have any cards that are um, like, um, you know, X factors that aren't going to get team, even though, no, especially the ones that are going to get team of the year, any X factor at all, I would start, start looking to sell them now. Any MSP that's tradable, I would start looking to sell them now. Any tradable card that's meta that does not sell for fodder price, I would say look at selling that now before team of the year, because what's going to happen at team of the year is prices are going to go straight down to the ground because everybody's going to be selling off their cards to try to afford these team of the year cards. And that means that, well, if you have coins left like me, um, you're going to be looking at setting your filter to 89 to 90, looking at all the tradable cards here. For example, this uh, Alexander Edler, you know, his price might fall down to, say, 150k a team of the year. And this is a great buy at 150k. This is probably the best left-handed defenseman in the game that's not fantasy or team builder. Um, because of the abilities that he has, this card's amazing. Um, somebody like, I don't know, you know, anybody, anybody really that you want to invest in. I mean, just this Joe Thornton even is good. Any MSP, this this Ovechkin is a great card to invest in. Just invest in cards that are, you know, somewhat rare at Team of the Year. Um, and you can probably sell them for a pretty good price afterwards. Now, what I will say is I would stay away from any cards that already have a Team of the Year. Because most people, for example, like this Connor McDavid here, most people are going to be getting McDavid's Team of the Year. Which means that this team, this 90 overall McDavid, isn't going to have as much value after Team of the Year. Because, you know, he will... Um, everybody will have him, so they don't need to have a need for a McDavid on their team. So cards like McDavid and stuff will come down, but cards like, say, this uh, this Alex Edler, the ones that you can't make, the Phil Kessel, the Alex Ovechkin, um, those cards are going to stay high because people are going to want to, you know, buy them after Team of the Year. And at Team of the Year is when they'll be their lowest because everybody's going to be selling them off to four Team of the Years. So that's what you're really going to be looking for during Team of the Year, um, is investing in those high-rated uh, cards for long-term holds. Me personally, with this 200k, uh, I'm going to be looking for cards like Alexander Ovechkin and Alex Edler uh, that I could buy for a pretty decent price. I'm going to be looking throughout the whole Team of the Year season. The only way I would spend my 200,000 coins uh, between now and Team of the Year is if there is going to be, you know, some um, 
team of the year that I'm like very close to, like say 200k away from another team of the year, then I would go ahead and spend that 200k. However, you want to keep some coins in your account because after team of the year, if you have zero coins left, it's going to take you a long time to grind your way back up to that million, two million, three million coin mark. And personally, I haven't been doing a lot of trading recently because, well, all my coins have been invested and, you know, maybe that's not the best idea in the world, but um, if I were you, I would hold on to a little bit of your coins if you can afford to, and then, you know, use those coins after team of the year, to kind of build your coin balance back up. And the good news is that after team of the year, you can splurge on any card you want. If you want to buy, say like, a you know, 90 overall Jack Eichel, you can go ahead and buy it. It's not going to hurt you. Team of the season is a, a long way away. And at this point, even come team of the season, the team of the season cards aren't going to be that important because by then the game is already pretty much dead. Um, so... You don't even need to really worry about team of the season. Just buy the cards that you want to buy. Use the cards that you want to use. Uh, what I would recommend, though, is staying away from untradeable cards. I would say, you know, investing in tradable cards is probably the better option because that way, at least you can sell the card again when you're done using it to get some coins back. Um, and that's something that I have to be better at. I've made a few MSPs, um, but really the only, you know, untradable MSPs that you should be making are the ones that you get with the free collectibles. Uh, from the challenges here, uh, like the uh, Nations of Hockey challenges, which I'm almost finished. I got to grind these out before Team of the Year. So, you know, I should finish this in my Champs run this weekend. Um, and yeah, that's the other thing. Play Champs, play Rivals as much as you can. Save your packs for Team of the Year. Even if you don't pull anything at Team of the Year, um, a lot of the fodder cards that you pull are going to be going for a very inflated price. So you could sell them if you're not going to use them. Um, and if you have already invested a lot of coins like I have into, you know, different players then I would certainly look to use as many of them as you as uh, use as many of them as you need to make the team of the years, but prioritize untradeable cards, even if it's cards within your team, uh, to put into the sets. For example, this this um hmm, who who can I use an example? This Sean McGurn card. He's been great for me. I love this card. Obviously the points return hasn't been great because he's been playing on my third, fourth line, but he's a very good card in game. I'm going to use him before I use somebody like Nathan McKinnon just because um, I can sell this Nathan McKinnon for 45-50k come Team of the Year and that's 50k that I can use you know, after Team of the Year to buy this Sean McGurn if I really wanted him back. Um, so I would say prioritize using your untradeable cards unless you absolutely love them. Uh, for example, Tebo Teravainen. I'm probably going to use him because he's not my favorite card, but if you love this Teravainen card and you know you're never going to be able to get him back, then don't put him into a set. Same thing with Latang. I would say this one is one that you can get back, so if you really like him, I don't care. Put him into the set. You can get him back after. Um, it's really going to help you out in the long run to do stuff like that. And uh, yeah, make sure that you are prioritizing not using you know these primetime cards and stuff because there could be trade-in sets come Team of the Year that say like, Oh, trade in an 86 primetime card for three power-up collectibles and then primetime start going through the roof. Uh, that's another thing that you could do. Invest in primetime cards tonight if you really wanted to. But yeah, with that being said, uh, that's going to be it for the video today. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, drop a like and subscribe. If you made it this far in the video, as always, comment made it this far. Uh, Twitch, Twitter, Discord links are down in the description. Uh, my Twitch has been going crazy lately. I love streaming on Twitch. So if you guys have Twitch and you want to stop by my streams, I usually stream... You know, either in the morning or late at night. Uh, if you guys want to stop by my streams and you can, I would greatly appreciate that. And with that being said, I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.